Hello, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Will Lyons. I'm Director of Product Management for WebLogic Server. And today I'll be giving you an overview of the Oracle WebLogic Server 12.1.3 release. That's the third version release in uh, the 12C series. So let's get started. Oracle actually releases WebLogic Server as part of its Cloud Application Foundation set of products which feature WebLogic Server and the Coherence in-memory data grid product. We deliver a choice of platforms on which you can build applications and deploy them, including public, private, or third-party clouds such as the Oracle Cloud, uh, Windows Azure, Amazon Web Services, and Verizon Terramark. We also provide the option to deploy applications with optimizations for web logic and coherence on Oracle's engineered systems, including Exologic systems. And of course, we support the deployment of web logic applications on conventional on-premise systems delivered by Oracle, uh, Dell, uh, standard Linux, Intel systems, and other operating systems. In delivering our products and WebLogic Server, we focus on a number of key investment areas. And those include first, uh, providing a highly productive development environment for building applications in general and, inc and increasingly applications that are delivered to mobile devices. We also have a heavy investment in delivering multi-tenancy capabilities in WebLogic and coherence. We invest in improving the availability and performance of applications that are deployed to our infrastructure. And we continue to invest in improvements to management tooling that enables the efficient management of deployed environments using WebLogic Server. So let's take a look at WebLogic Server 12.1.3, the latest 12C release, and see what kinds of improvements uh, we've made in each of these areas. And this slide summarizes uh, some new feature enhancements that I'll be providing more details on. But we've invested in improvements in mobile and developer productivity, uh, improved high availability and performance, improved manageability capabilities. And also in this release, we're releasing WebLogic Server and Coherence as part of the overall Fusion Middleware 12.1.3 release. So WebLogic Server is actually the foundation for another, a number of other products that are releasing in 12.1.3, including SOA Suite, Oracle Service Bus, Business Process Management, and other products. So I will cover each of these areas in detail. And we'll start with uh, what we've done in the area of providing enhancements for developer productivity, particularly when building mobile applications. Uh, we increasingly see today uh, deployment of WebLogic Server in environments which are servicing rich client applications uh, with HTML5 browsers or mobile clients that take responsibility for rendering the user interface on the device itself. And those devices in the applications running on those devices access the server for business logic running on the server and for data updates that are sent uh, between the client and the server. Such application environments uh, typically use newer types of protocols and uh, delivery formats, uh, such as REST, uh, WebSocket, JSON data formats that are important for delivery of such applications. So in WebLogic Server 12.1.3, we've invested heavily in the protocols and the data formatting necessary to support such applications. For example, we've updated our RESTful web services support from the prior JAXRS 1.1 standard to the JAXRS 2.0 standard, which is supported in Java EE7. We've updated an initial WebSocket implementation delivered in WebLogic Server 12.1.2 to the WebSocket standard defined in Java EE7 uh, called WebSocket 1.0. We've also, from the EE7 standards, are implementing support of the new JSON programming API uh, for parsing JSON on the server. And we've also updated our Java persistence API capability. So what we've done in 12.1.3 is we've selected a subset of the Java EE7 APIs that we feel are most relevant for developing these new types of applications and included them in the WebLogic Server 12.1.3 release. 
In addition to that, we've uh, provided some additional value add components, including support of the server send events protocol, which enables lightweight updates from servers to clients. Um, WebSocket emulation capability. Uh, WebSocket is a new protocol that enables an HTML5 client to establish a persistent connection with the server in the back end, uh, persistent socket connection. However, not all browsers and not all networking infrastructures support the use of this protocol today. So our, WebLog our WebSocket emulation capability delivered in WebLogic Server 12.1.3 enables a developer to build a WebSocket application and we have the smarts built into our client and server infrastructure to recognize whether the browser client and the network infrastructure can support the WebSocket protocol, and if not, fall back to other connectivity mechanisms between the client and the server. We also support in our JPA implementation, uh, which is top link based on the Eclipse link reference implementation for JPA, the ability to expose uh, JPA objects via RESTful interfaces for use by such clients. So we've added a lot of new capability in WebLogic 12.1.3 to enable the development of these types of applications and have also uh, delivered improvements to our development tooling, including IDE support, Maven support, support for use of Spring in developing WebLogic applications, which further simplify the process of developing such applications and making developers more productive. Let's move on to what we've done to improve the availability and performance of applications that are deployed to WebLogic Server 12.1.3. Uh, in WebLogic Server 12.1.2, we made a heavy investment in integrating WebLogic Server with Oracle Database 12C, the latest version of the Oracle database. Uh, such enhancements include direct support for application con continuity, integration with pluggable databases, integration with database resident connection pooling provided by the Oracle database. In WebLogic 12.1.3, we've added further integration enhancements, uh, including the bundling of the latest 12C thin driver, which simplifies the process of connecting to the Oracle 12C database, and certification of AQJMS as delivered in database 12C as a foreign JMS provider in WebLogic server. These are the kinds of enhancements that uh, enable you to easily integrate your WebLogic applications with the Oracle database and make your applications more, more scalable and uh, more performant and more available. Within WebLogic Server itself, within the core server, we've also delivered other enhancements to improve high availability of WebLogic Server applications. Uh, within our transaction management subsystem, we are providing the option to uh, configure applications to use XA transactions without requiring a transaction log. Um, in short, what this enables is you to run um, transactional applications without recording the state of the, those transactions in a transaction log. And that eliminates the requirement for you to replicate those logs and those files across uh, sites when you're configuring disaster recovery environments. So it's a nice optimization using the latest transaction management techniques, which is really intended to simplify the process of configuring uh, multi-data center configurations for disaster recovery. Finally, we've delivered uh, new optimizations for WebLogic when running on the Exologic engineered systems. Um, those optimizations include what we call cooperative memory management, which enables WebLogic Server to uh, dynamically adjust the amount of memory it's using in cases where memory consumption is growing on uh, the systems where it is running. We've also delivered unique performance uh, capabilities for our JMS implementation when running on Exologic systems. This includes uh, the delivery of an in-memory replicated store, which provides very high performance for persistent JMS applications when running on Exologic systems. Now let's talk about the improvements we've made to manageability of WebLogic Server in 12.1.3. We're very proud of the capabilities that WebLogic provides overall for enabling efficient management of WebLogic environments, and we've taken this to the next step in WebLogic Server 12.1.3. 
Uh, first, we built on a new feature capability we delivered in WebLogic 12.1.2 called Dynamic Clusters. Uh, dynamic clusters enable you to easily configure clusters and to scale them in response to application throughput requirements. Prior to 12.1.3, uh, JMS environments in dynamic clusters could not be configured for high availability. In other words, they did not survive failure situations. We've provided support for a feature in WebLogic called whole server migration in WebLogic Server 12.1.3, which enables you to create highly available JMS configurations in dynamic clusters. It's an enhancement for dynamic clusters, which makes them more broadly applicable to WLS applications. We also, in WebLogic 12.1.1 and 12.1.2, have delivered RESTful interfaces to our management capabilities. Uh, such support in prior releases, in the 12.1.1 and 12.1.2 releases, was focused primarily on monitoring capabilities. We've expanded that support in 12.1.3 to include lifecycle management, the ability to start and stop servers, the ability to configure data sources, and the ability to deploy applications using RESTful interfaces. We th this is a very interesting uh, new capability. We see customers and users who are interested in using these interfaces from their own applications for, or from third-party tools that use RESTful interfaces to monitor and manage their environments. So that's another new manageability capability. We've also enhanced Fusion Middleware Control, uh, the strategic console for managing Fusion Middleware product domains to provide broader support for monitoring and managing WebLogic server configurations. So if you're managing a combined Fusion Middleware, let's say a SOA suite or a business process management environment along with WebLogic server, the, um, the functional support provided in Fusion Middleware control has been broadened in WebLogic 12.1.3. And we've also made it easier to use uh, web service policies that are built in Oracle Web Services Manager uh, to globally attach them to WebLogic Web Services to simplify the process of using policies with WebLogic Web Services and securing WebLogic Web Services. Finally, uh, I'll just mention that uh, WebLogic Server 12.1.3 is the foundation of the entire Fusion Middleware 12.1.3 release. So the products listed here are either built on or integrated with WebLogic Server 12.1.3. So users who choose to implement applications on WebLogic 12.1.3 uh, will also have the ability to upgrade to and use these other capabilities provided within Fusion Middleware. And also, if you are using these Fusion Middleware products, you will be using WebLogic Server and will have the ability to access the features I have just mentioned. So, in summary, WebLogic Server 12.1.3 includes new features for developer productivity, for high availability and performance, uh, for cloud management, and to support the overall Fusion Middleware product set. As WebLogic Server 12.1.3 represents the third release of WebLogic Server 12c, uh, WebLogic Server 12.1.1, 12.1.2, and 12.1.3, we now have a large set of new features which users and customers who are seeking to build new applications can take advantage of if you are using WebLogic 12C. So I hope you found uh, this presentation useful, and I'll hope you'll go to uh, the Oracle Technology Network, download our software and, and use it, review our documentation, white papers, videos describing details of all the product features I've just described, and I hope you find value in, the, in this latest WebLogic server release. Thank you very much.